Julie and I are going on 29 years of marriage and you have to make compromise to make a happy marriage and a long-lasting marriage. So I would love to be spending my summers in Montenegro on the beach, in the sun, in the water, drinking a beer with friends. Julie, she likes her cool, cold weather and you know we have our home in Montenegro and so we have this agreement come July we are going to the cooler climates for Julie. So I get to stay in my happy space until July 1 and then we have to cool Julie off. And she actually left our home a little bit early. We took a trip in the Balkans. I'm going to tell you about a couple places that are great for beating the heat, getting some higher elevation, and as well as investment opportunity. And Julie also did a train ride on her own between these locations. So I did, and we're going to detail how this train ride was, what it cost, and the intricacies about it. There are some different little things that uh, go into this particular train ride. Yeah. So first off, um, we left the uh, coastal area of Montenegro and we hit the higher elevations in a town called Kalashin. And it's a place where the government of Montenegro is focusing money to bring up the winter tourism and to uh, build the ski resorts there. And there's all kinds of new condos and uh, homes being built up there and a lot of uh, a lot of great opportunity. And we've seen a change a bit in the year. And so we went up there, we stayed in an Airbnb and the costs there were pretty reasonable. Let's take a look at the Airbnb. Our Airbnb was 54 euros for one night or $58.48 for those of you looking at dollars. This takes about uh, two hours and 30 minutes to get here from where we live on the coast. And as a reminder, this is late June. So time of the year will vary on the price, but this was a nice comfortable one bedroom and the link will be in the video description if you're interested in renting this, if you're coming up towards Colossian. So three of us were up there, by the way. My friend is visiting from the States and old high school buddy. And if you saw the last video, we were out doing bars and talking about scams in Montenegro. Uh, so check that out if you haven't, because Julie wasn't around for that one. But we um, stayed in this uh, Airbnb. And then we also uh, went out to eat. And for us going out to eat in Kalashin for three of us for three meals, was 60 euros. So that's roughly going to be, um, what, 65 bucks approximately? Impressive. <laughs> and so that's for three people, three meals eating out. And so we, we felt like that was a one heck of a deal. And when we look at Colossian, we look at where it is now and where it may go. So Julie um, stumbled on a place called Zlatibor, Serbia. Um, without me back in what year? 2017. And boy, has it changed since 2017. I mean, just exploded. <laughs> it is an incredible place up in the mountains at about a thousand meters uh, elevation. So much cooler in the summer for people like me. And, you know, he's got his coast. Yeah. So, well, Zlatibor has boomed and the buildings have been going up all over there. The Lake in the middle has now been turned into a fountain that they do water shows in in the evening. Yeah. And you have summer camps up there for kids for volleyball, for basketball, for soccer slash football, as well as boxing. Um, so it was quite an interesting um, place to be, but you have families coming up there and people own homes from Belgrade. They this is where they're going into the summer to beat the heat and horseback riding. I mean, anything you're looking for is pretty much there from zip lines, bungee jumping. It's all mm. available within yeah. a short distance. Got swimming in different lakes as well. Yeah. So we see the Zlatibor opportunity in Colossian. So we see um, Colossian is growing and has growth opportunity. And it's uh, got a brand new road built from 
put Greece at the capital so it makes it easy for airlines to land and to take off. But there's also a train that goes all the way from Podgorica that you can take all the way to Belgrade and with a little bit of luck you can take it to some other places like Novi Sad. But Julie, you did your trip um, pick, picking up at the gas, uh, not the gas station, <laughs> at the train station. We left you there in Colossian yep. and watched you get on the train. So let's uh, take a look at Julie's train experience to get from Colossian to Zlatibor. Yeah, Julie's a big girl, taking a trip by herself. <laughs> so I'm going to be taking the train today and I'm going to show you guys what it's like from Colossian, Montenegro to Branci, I think is how you would say it, in um, Serbia. So proud of my big girl taking a trip by herself. Oh, look at her. International <laughs> trip on a train to Serbia. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Don't forget to give the video a like. And don't forget to go to our Facebook page and look for Warren Julie Travel and join our group of expats, nomads, adventurers, and share your experiences and expenses and learn from others. If you're a homeowner anywhere in the world and you want to swap your home for more than 30 days, don't forget to check our Schengen Shuffle House Swap Facebook group as well. We just started that one and we've already got a great house swap going on and one scheduled down the road for our own home in Montenegro. Okay, I'm on. <laughs> I have to say, it's actually really comfortable, um, air conditioned. I think it's gonna be a lovely journey. I'm excited. Okay, so I won't lie, I'm a little bit anxious right now. So I get on the train, he comes in, he tells me I can only get to Bielo Polje which is up not too far from the border. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to do. It was two euros and 20 cents for this part of the journey. And apparently I've got to get on another train and I'm hoping I can actually get where I'm supposed to go. I have to say the train journey is quite lovely, you guys. I would definitely take it again. Of course, I'm nowhere near where I need to be, so we shall see. If you're an expat, nomad, student living overseas, or working overseas, or a missionary, don't forget to go to warrenjulietravel.com and look at our health coverage page for international health coverage. And don't forget, I am an agent, and I'll be glad to try to assist you if you need additional help. You can email me at warrenjulietravel at gmail.com. And I am an appointed agent, and I will receive a commission if you sign up with any of the companies that I represent. And for that, I would thank you. Okay, I've arrived in Branishki. And how much again was that for the whole trip? So for the first train, as you saw, I paid two euros and 20 cents. And then unexpectedly had to change trains and you know none of this is is knowledge known uh, beforehand which is tough um and then i had to pay 908 serbian diner on the second train now i was really lucky they came around they let me pay in euros in cash i gave 10 euros he gave me change back because it's 908 comes out just a little bit close to about eight dollars and some odd cents um, so all in all, I went on that train for a little over 10 euros and that was a long journey. It really was, but great. Um, as you can see, or as you did see, the, the train car I had was really comfortable. It was air conditioned. It was really nice. I would highly recommend this journey. And the one from Podgorica, we had friends that took that one only a week after me they actually brought their two dogs. And now the train was much more uh, packed for them, but they still had a great journey. It was air conditioned for them, just as it was for me. And it was really a nice ride. Yeah, so Zlatibor is one of our favorite go-to locations in Serbia. Um, if it's not on your radar, it should be, but this is a place that has had exponential growth. It has just, boomed. I, I'm going to say that from the time Julie discovered it in 2017, that it's probably what uh, quadrupled in size? It, it sure seems like it. 
And I mean, the the unfortunate thing is some of the older homes and the older hotels are gone because they built so many new high rise. I call them high rise. Maybe they're six stories, seven stories high. So not like New York, New York or anything like that. But um, you still have that feeling of being out in the country, but it's got more of a um, Dollywood feel now of of, um, feel instead of a small, quaint town like it had. So it's got a lot going on. And you know, we often hear from a lot of couples that are very much like us. Hey, by the way, I really love the mountains. The husband really loves the coast or vice versa. And this is really, it's the perfect little thing for uh, for couples because Warren has his coastal region. And then this train is, it's a game changer for most people. You don't have to have public transportation. And while we speak about the train, we don't want to let, I know we're going to get some corrections if I don't say this. The train actually starts in Bar Montenegro on the coast. Yes. And you can actually get a ferry from Italy, from Bari, Italy, over to Bar Montenegro. So really, you can go from Italy to Bar, all the way to Belgrade. And right. along the way, you can stop in Colossian, or you can stop in Serbia, and then again get transportation, like Julie had uh, just mentioned, over to Zlatibor. So if you're a person that's either doing the Schengen Shuffle, and you're wanting to get to some mountain area in the summertime, or if you want to go skiing in the winter, this is an option for you. Yes. And, you know, this train, as I mentioned in the beginning, has some interesting little intricacies. <laughs> Firstly, you cannot buy the train tickets online. So that's a little stressful, uh, especially for Kalashin. You absolutely cannot buy them online. And as a matter of fact, we came the night before and I wasn't able to buy tickets. I literally jumped on the train and sat down and they only give about a 60 second stop in Colossian with this train. I got in, it was already rolling when I'm walking and I went straight into my train car. I'm sitting there thinking, what do I do next? A man came over, the train attendant asked, uh, hey, you know, um, where are you going? I told him where I was heading, which was Braneshki, Serbia. He looked at me and said, "Um, where? He said, this train ends in Bielo Polje, which is in Montenegro. Well, talk about a little bit of a panic there. <laughs> so he charged me two euros and 20 cents. And then he told me I was gonna be changing trains. None of this information is online, none. So I did change trains, but it was super simple. We pulled up, the train next to me was where I had to actually board. Once I boarded, I kind of panicked as I mentioned, And I didn't know, was I going to get fined because I didn't have a ticket or what was going to happen? My train attendant came over. I showed him on Google Translate because he could not speak English that I needed to buy a train ticket for uh, Braneshki, Serbia. He knew what I was talking about, took a few minutes, went back to the back, got these little paper tickets and filled one out and charged me 908 uh, Serbian diner. And like I said, I paid him the 10 euros, but you know, it it was a little stressful. There was no real easy knowledge on any of this, but that's the beauty of the Balkans. (laughs) Speaking about beauty in the Balkans, we've got some great waterfalls and great areas around Zlatibor, as well as nature areas around Kalashin. So there's a lot to see, but while we're in Zlatibor, we're gonna show you what our Airbnb cost while we were here, but also you can check out the link in the video description. So if you're choosing to go to Zlatibor in the future and you want to stay where we stayed on this trip, we would recommend this location. And if you have a dog, it was fantastic. It had a nice little green space right outside our back fence here. So take a look at this Airbnb. We had a short three night stay in Zlatibor this day and it was $62.76 per night in this Airbnb surrounded by nature, but close to the center. Okay, we're just about to check out. This was a nice stay. Beds were comfortable. Good sized bathroom. Great living room. Kitchen. Mattresses were comfortable. Lots of built-in storage. You had nice living room. 
This is the other bedroom. We had our guest with us. And having dogs, this was fantastic. We had it outside, sat out there with those chairs, watched the dogs at play right out here. Would stay here again in a heartbeat. Julie got to have her little vacation with her friend up there in the in Sladerborg, the little girls hangout time. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of video from that period, not like uh, the party that um, Renee and I were having down on the coast. So again, check that one out. But then we uh, came up to Zlatibor, picked her up um, after she had about five days without us. And we spent a few days with her in Zlatibor. And now we, uh, from, since then, we road tripped up to where we are now in Copenhagen. In case you are wondering what's behind us, we're living this little beautiful utopia community in Copenhagen at the moment. But yes. we had a really nice trip that we'll do in another video that uh, brought us here a uh, nice road trip it was it was and if you aren't following us if you haven't subscribed i suggest you subscribe now because we're really going to get a deep dive into copenhagen we're here for three weeks and we're also taking a trip to norway and let me mention we are actually doing a house swap right now we um have our home in montenegro that's our home base and if you're new and we traded homes with the folks here and have a 19 day stay. Normally if we're swapping homes, we want 30 days or more, but uh, we're doing a 19 day stay here in Copenhagen. Um, and yeah, we have a web, uh, we have a Facebook group now for home swapping. So if you're not familiar with it, please go to our new Facebook group for home swap. Of course, join our regular Facebook group as well with lots of expats and nomads and world travelers to share your adventures and your experiences and learn from others. But the house swap thing is a new thing that we're really excited about. And we've got a 90 day stay that we're swapping our home for in the winter in Tuscany as well. So yeah. um, if you've got a home anywhere in the world, even though we're focusing on these long stays from Schengen, you can put your home on anywhere. You don't necessarily have to be Schengen um, to non Schengen, but we are looking for people that are willing to swap homes for 30 days or more for longer term stays for slow travel purposes, etc. And as a reminder, Julie and I, we slow travel. We spend a month to three months in a location We're trying to see what it's like to live in different places, trying to share our experiences and expenses with you. We hope that you're going to subscribe, give this video a like, and until next time, have a great day, everybody. Bye bye. Ciao.